Clerks. It's a movie that I watch at least once a year. There's a magical charm about it that manages to stay in your thoughts. It's smart, dirty, intelligently written, and captures the attitudes of the 90s and slackers everywhere. He doesn't love you anymore. He loves Caitlyn. And he told you all of this? Pretty much. All except the latent homosexuality part. That's just my theory. But like a lot of other successful comedies of that era, this one almost birthed a TV pilot. To put it nicely, just be happy that it didn't take off and become a show. And no, I'm not talking about the brilliant animated series that aired on Comedy Central and was more true to Kevin Smith's vision. What I'm referring to could only be the unaired 1995 pilot. While this pilot does have convenience store clerks who bother customers and sleep on the job as much as they can, this pilot just isn't funny, the script is ridiculous, and the characters are unlikable. There appears to be a young Jim Brewer playing Randall. What a waste of talent. Apparently, Brian O'Halloran and Jeff Anderson both asked to try out for the parts of Dante and Randall, but they were turned down. In a way, that was the show's first mistake. When the original cast of a movie or show hands themselves over to you on a platter, it shouldn't be taken lightly. Then again, I think if they were to read the script, they would have backed out of it immediately. But the casting choices are distracting to me because I miss that self-loathing look that Brian O'Halloran's Dante had. Not to mention everybody in this pilot looks really young. In fact, probably younger than what the clerk's premise calls for. Not for air, that sounds accurate. As I start this miserable bastard, I come to the realization that this pilot must have... <gasps> you guessed it! A laugh track! There's no way a live audience would actually find any of these jokes amusing or even worth a chuckle. You know that your show is in trouble when the first joke is as wretched as this one. You're one of those people who thinks that tanning causes cancer, right? <laughs> oh, you mean one of those smart people? What does cause cancer, Sandra? Lotion. <laughs> uh -huh. In fact, these are the kind of jokes that a seven-year-old kid would tell at a party, and everybody would just laugh to be polite about it. I got plans. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, what kind of plans? Big plans. What kind of big plans? Big, vague plans. <laughs> The following program was aired in front of a live audience. Some of this audience consisted of a laugh track and some were astoundingly high. Vanilla ice, man! Yeah. Takes us bad! <laughs> Todd, come on, give me a break. Lotion? There's nothing in this stuff that could. Ow! What? Ow! Crying game, she's a man, presumed innocent, wife did it, 1984, they shoot him, six dollars. Never mind. Oh great, thanks for spoiling those movies for everybody. Could you imagine if this were to happen every episode? People would be avoiding the show like crazy just to stay in the dark. It's just like when whole TV seasons are released all in the same day. You have to avoid the internet until you watch it all to avoid accidentally seeing spoilers. This movie blows. See, I think it sucks. Parts of it suck, parts of it blow. Mega Maid went from suck to blow! The story, if you can call it that, is that Dante's girlfriend and father are disappointed that he's not taking enough charge in his life. Let me guess, you got me another job interview with one of your friends? Well, technically not a friend. Just a guy I met on the elevator who, uh, Asked me why I was sobbing. Naturally, your name came up. What a loving father and son relationship, right? Son, uh, you know that I didn't want to have you, right? It was all your mother's idea. His father tries to hook him up with a better job, and his friends aren't happy with his selling out from being a slacker. You just remember, we took an oath in eighth grade. You do what comes easiest, and the minute it becomes difficult, you quit. So you think I made a mistake? Oh, let me put it to you this way. that dance read out in the script. Ah yes, Jim Brewer's part. Dance like a full bladder five-year-old meth head having a seizure. Meanwhile, their friend Cliff is going to work at a law firm. I gotta say, Cliff must have taken 52 hours of college a week to get that degree so quickly out of high school. Uh, anyway, he's holding a going away party and Dante is torn about whether he should go or rest up for his job interview. 
He decides ultimately to crash the party and convince Cliff to vandalize a water tower. You know, to relive their high school days and go out with a bang. Why? It was a senior prank they didn't get to do when they were still in high school. I'm of the opinion that a better senior prank would be to plant a Christmas tree in the football field, but I digress. The police show up and Cliff, saying the most devastating thing imaginable to Dante, I can't be arrested. I'll end up like you! Gives Dante a massive wake-up call. Instead of both of them getting arrested, Dante takes the blame for the whole thing. Veronica rides with Dante in the police car to say that she's proud of him for taking responsibility and says he doesn't have to get the insurance job he was going to interview for. Ha! <laughs> Look at the cop's face, even he sees this as a complete joke. She told him that he needed to grow up a little and now he's trying and she's changing her mind. I want you to work harder at being you. Well, being you to him basically means not growing up and scraping by with a bare minimum. For no reason, the cop pulls over and tells them to leave before he changes his mind. He probably thought, well, these two are so stupid that I don't think jail will make anything better. But who can resist the charm of more clerks, the sitcom? There's an end credit sequence where our wonderful Oscar nominees are watching footage of Ray stealing everything in the store. It, yeah, Ray, not Jay. Not Jay and Silent Bob, just Ray. The sad thing is that it probably would have been funny had the rest of the episode been funny or built up to it better. I guess I can't despise it too much because after all, it never aired. So why did I watch it? Because I liked the movie. That's the only reason anybody would want to watch this. Similar to the Star Wars Holiday Special, everybody knows that it's terrible, but Star Wars fans will likely drool over the thought of owning it. You can't blame anybody for wanting to be open-minded and wanting to see a piece of history of something that they like. That's all this is. Regardless, this pilot just wasn't enjoyable to watch. The jokes aren't funny, the acting is atrocious even by sitcom standards, the characters are morons, and the whole thing just makes me wish I was watching the original movie. In the end, I'm left depressed and ashamed. Avoid if possible.